Hi, I'm Brennan. Pat. Andriana. And we're here with Heal the Bay Aquarium down here on the Santa Monica Pier with all our bio facts right here. We're just informing the public of what we're doing. We're open 12 to 4, Tuesday through Sunday. During the summer. Of a sea lion skull. You might think sea lions are really cute, and they are. They also have these powerful jaws. They also have, yep. Um, they're eating mostly fish. But, um, you can see, that's why when you see them out on the um, barges or out on the floating docks, they're warming up after a night of fishing. And all of them, the males and the females, have a sagittal crest, this bone right here. But the males are going to have a bigger sagittal crest. So you're going to be able to see it. And it's also going to be lighter on the like, fur. And that shows the dominant male in a group. If, you're, if, they're, if you see a bunch of sea lions and they're all floating on the docks, um, there's probably going to be one alpha male that has a really big sagittal crest, and then a bunch of females, and then some smaller males that aren't quite grown up yet. Um, and then we also have an abalone shell. A little fake abalone in here. Yeah, abalone. So. Uh, yeah, kind of like an oyster. These are a type of snail, though, whereas oysters are um, like a type of bivalve, like the two um, shells. And these guys were really important food for the Tongva and the Shumash, indigenous groups who lived here and who still live here today in Santa Monica. But they were overfished because they look really pretty and because they make good food. You can still find them in some grocery stores. I've seen them in Little Tokyo. But um, those are farmed. They're not taken from the ocean because these guys are super threatened. They took too many out of the environment. And right now, white abalone are critically endangered. We can't replace the number currently in the environment. So a lot of aquariums are growing white abalone so they don't go extinct. Did you want to learn? <laughs> Uh, a jaw of a tiger shark and so this is like the front side and then you would see these rows of teeth initially but then they have so many at the same time. Yeah so like for the tiger shark, not all shark teeth look like this but the tiger one has this like structure I guess um, but they have all these rows of teeth and they're not using them all at the same time for eating. They have these as like a back storage for whenever they use the teeth. Every time they eat an animal, the teeth is it's bound to be lost. So they have all these teeth ready to just come forward like a conveyor belt and it'll just take the place of the missing tooth. And a shark can go through between 10,000 and 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. So it's really crazy to think about because that's, that's a lot of teeth. Do you, uh, you know if it happens like instantaneously when they lose it or is there like a mechanism that actually like pushes the teeth in place? Um, It's a mechanism. It's not like an immediate thing, but it does. It, in a time efficient way so that you know it's not gonna be consequential to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you know how like our teeth will just automatically grow in the place. Right, it too? comes down. We already have that tooth. That piece set too. Yeah, so it'll just come down, but it'll likely be a lot quicker than ours takes because yeah, they go through so many. Plus they already have them like yeah, right there. Yeah, they're in the literally wings. right there, yeah. That's tight. Um, you can also see really closely um, there's like a little baby tooth that are forming, so it's just a whole process. They're so do they do they develop and actually like go like Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of movement, yeah. Concentrically I guess? Uh yeah. And it's because they're not really using the tooth back here and it's all really up here for like the shredding, but it also depends on the type of shark. Um some sharks have a assortment of different types of teeth like where they have no ways of maybe Oh, interesting. I didn't know what to go. Are these tiger snakes native to uh, Santa Monica? Yeah, so these are native to the Southern Valley. They're native to the Southern Valley. They're native to the Southern Valley. They're native to the Southern Valley. So not necessarily right on Santa Monica, but... You get them up there, so... Yeah, and especially during the migration. But they're more southern, huh? I actually don't know. That's okay. No, sorry, sorry. They do prefer warmer water, so that's why it's like... That would make sense to be more southern. Yeah. I can say even the turtle shell, we have turtles in Long Beach. There's a factory that's sending out warmer water. And so there's one little area in Long Beach you can visit that you can see some green sea turtles. Oh, that's dope. Um, so everything else here can be found in the Santa Monica area. Even, unfortunately, the cigarettes. Yeah, unfortunately, absolutely. Um, these are just a small portion of the cigarettes we collected at our coastal cleanup day. Um, we have beach cleanups all the time, but we have a really big one in September. It's the coastal cleanup day. And, oh, what day is it? Uh, that is a good question. Okay. I just know it's, like in, it's September. in September. If you go to our website, Heal the Bay, um, you'll be able to find some more information. That's cool. Um, a calendar, so you can just click the event and then sign up for it, and you can see everything that's upcoming, and we also have laundry beach cleanups too, so there's a lot of opportunities.
you guys. Very cool. That's cool that you guys do that. Do you think cigarettes have plastic in them? Uh, yes. Yes, they do. So it's filter, in the filter yeah. yeah. It looks like it's made out of like fiberglass a of cotton, but yes, it's made out of little synthetic fibers. So on top of having the toxins in the cigarettes, when fish eat cigarettes thinking it's food, they have that plastic in their stomach and they can't digest it. Um, they can get sick, the or they, can, they can, uh also break down into smaller, smaller pieces and end up in the food chain. I just like well, you know, stay up here because I work in a lot of factories. Do you know if fish can here. digest and break down styrofoam? Because I see a lot of styrofoam. And, and, and so it just stays in their stomach and then they can get full and they can't digest other stuff. And then if we catch them, they end up on a plate. Yes. Yes. I'm sure they have the ability to break down the styrofoam. Yes. They're very good at breaking down 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 styrofoam. Yes. Which means when they eat it, yeah, that's yeah. all yeah. the refined that they're eating, all that food, um, all that so calcium. That's one of the reasons why we ask you to just kind of think about what you're buying. Like even when you go to the grocery right? store, can you recycle the plastic that you're buying? Like the little containers that strawberries come in can't always be recycled. So, because the way the um, out, a lot of packaging that comes on like frozen veggies and stuff can't be recycled. Yeah, a lot of a lot of packaging that also comes on like stuff that are pulled off boats or like like truck drivers ship. It's a lot of styrofoam when they're breaking it down. Yeah, it's just little balls, and the wind just takes it. And, and a lot of that stuff comes out of like long beach, red abalone, orange. I do. Uh, we also clean up in the Redondo Beach Harbor, and we see little pieces of styrofoam all the time. We figure out it's the docks decomposing. Like the docks are built out of styrofoam. It's definitely oh wait, the docks are built out of styrofoam. Like the the styrofoam like surrounding the docks, like kind of pushing them, but they're decomposing, and then they're going into the harbor. I know. Hopefully, we can figure something out in the future. Those are purple tears. Yeah. It's, it's a natural yeah. wood. I can see, like, in, like, you know, it's a big industry. Yeah. Yeah. And they use styrofoam. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you see yeah. them, they look so Maybe there's, like, a biodegradable. Yeah. 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 yeah, and that's actually one of the things that Kiyopay is doing. Yeah. Um, we don't so do a lot with the shipping industry, right but we're part of the reason right? why you have to ask for straws, why I believe Santa Monica is not going to need plastic straws anymore, or has to be biodegradable plastic. We are part of the reason why you have to ask for utensils in Santa Monica, why there's no styrofoam, like the takeout containers, as there shouldn't be any in Santa Monica. They're really And so we're, one of, we're like behind all that, trying to get plastic reduction. But I can also see, yes, it's like difficult when you when you see like in your own life you're reducing plastic and then you get to your job and you're like, oh, I'm using all this plastic for my work. Yeah. And it's, like, it's such a massive industry and we, it's like a very necessary industry. Yeah, it's Oh yeah, I mean we learned that lesson during COVID, you know, when like they all shut down and we couldn't like get what we needed from the stores. Yeah, and then everything was wrapped in tons and tons of plastic because you're trying to be sanitary. Yeah, this is really cool what you guys are doing. I'll definitely give you guys a look up. So I just want to do these dudes come up to Santa Monica? Yeah, um, so we see those at the end of the pier sometimes. Uh, they're annoying to the fishermen because they're trying to grab the fishermen's uh, catch. Right, right. Um, and then I also see them in Redondo Beach. There's like a little floating bar in Redondo Beach. But I'm sure there are other places as well. Thank you. Thank you guys for all your information. So what kind of the... Yeah, thanks for asking questions. Did you have any questions? Thank you.